Good evening, I'm Shane Jones, leading the news at 7. After weeks of investigating a gastroenteritis outbreak on the south coast in the area of the sewage problem, the Ministry of Health has identified the source of that problem. Lisa Lord has the details of that story for us. Lisa? Yes, Shane, the Ministry of Health first revealed earlier this month that it was investigating an outbreak of gastroenteritis involving about 10 patients. Now we've learned that 34 cases met the criteria for the gastroenteritis outbreak investigation. A statement issued by the ministry has also indicated that it was a localized foodborne disease outbreak at a specific food business. The business in question has, however, not been identified. The ministry also says no other clusters of similar illness were reported from elsewhere in the area of the sewage spill. No organisms were identified through laboratory testing. Therefore, the outbreak has not been linked to any particular food or beverage or the sewage spill. Additionally, no new cases of gastroenteritis have been reported since January 3rd. We're also learning that the Environmental Health Department has stepped up its monitoring of the affected area to provide specific guidance to managers and staff of food establishments on the safe handling of food. In this regard, it has so far held two training sessions aimed at operators and kitchen and restaurant staff to update them on food safety, cleaning and sanitizing, as well as vector control and pest management. Shane? Thank you, Lisa. And of course, we will keep monitoring that story and bring you further updates as they come to hand. Prime Minister Frundle Stewart has shared government's position on the ongoing calls by labor officials for a wage increase for public servants. The comments came as he addressed the Barbados Chamber of Commerce and Industry's first business luncheon for the new year. In relation to the ongoing discussions between the government and the public sector, our hope that some measure of relief could be provided to the public servants from the gains to be derived from the recently implemented National Social Responsibility Levy was conditioned on what was actually achieved by the measure. Non-salary and salary alternatives are being explored to see what accommodation can be considered. Mr. Stewart sought to put the issue in further perspective. He said we must remember that in Barbados, wages and working conditions in the public sector are comparatively higher than wage and working conditions in other countries. While we are desirous of providing a level of relief, let us be mindful that Barbados is not the only country in which public sector workers have experienced wage rigidity. In the United Kingdom, a developed G7 country, public officers have experienced a wage freeze from 2010 to 2013 and a 1% cap in pay rise increases. A specialist in treating substance abuse is heartened by the number of women who have been seeking treatment for drug addiction. But she's also concerned about the impact drug abuse has had on these families. Marietta Carrington is the chief executive officer of the two-year-old Marina House. She says about 33 women who have among them 70 children have accessed treatment at the facility. And according to Ms. Carrington, 46 or 66 percent of those children were minors. Addiction represents the breakdown of the family unit, sometimes poverty, compromised education, and loss of self-esteem. Many of these children often lose the gift of fun and laughter, growing up far too quickly as this tragedy play havoc on their little lives. For the wider family, there is shame too. We really don't want anyone to know that we have a loved one who has a problem with addiction. We worry, we make ourselves sick, and oftentimes there is need to provide some support for the immediate family. Meantime, Vice President of Sadrico Life Inc.'s Group Insurance Division, Patricia Brathwit Marshall, warns that an employer's mental well-being should be taken as seriously as his or her physical well-being. In her capacity, Mrs. Brathwit Marshall is seeing more claims for stress-related illnesses. Companies are not only affected by physical illnesses, 
but also from absenteeism, from persons suffering or recovering from substance abuse, or those who have not at least acknowledged that they are suffering from those illnesses. If left unchecked and with full adequate tools or resources to cope with such issues, individuals fall prey to substance abuse. While this may seem to be a problem for the individual to resolve, there will of course be ramifications for their day-to-day -day activities, including work output and social interactions. The island's largest technical and vocational skills competition, World Skills Barbados 2018, is set to take place at BMEX this year. And here to tell us more about that competition is Executive Director of the Technical and Vocational Education and Training Council, or TVET, Henderson Eastman. Brother Eastman, wonderful for having you this evening. Thanks for having me. Okay, let me get straight to it. How do we become more competitive as a country using TVET? As a country, we need to diversify our technical offerings mm -hmm. to look at the newer technologies and infuse technology in the traditional areas that we do, especially areas like ITC, so that we can um, di diversify our manufacturing offerings so mm -hmm. we can help support the manufacturing in industry. We can have a more competitive agricultural industry because, you know, agriculture now a lot of crops can be grown without soil, mm -hmm. talking about hydroponics, and we have the alternative and renewable energies. We have to step up our technologies in the creative industries, mm -hmm. like rigging and stage management and things like that. So there's a lot to do, new areas, mm -hmm. and also raising the level of the areas, because currently we, in our experience with World Skills International last October, we realized there was a gap. Mm -hmm. Most of the competitors from the countries that did well they were operating at level three and above. Mm -hmm. And most of our training is the technical training institutions are at level two. Mm -hmm. So we have a gap to close up. So uh, what policies need to go forward to help uh, TVET and to get Barbadians into the frame of mind to think skills over academics? I think um, what is happening is true necessity now because mm -hmm. you have an economy that is driven mostly by tourism and, and, and those other areas. I think because of what is happening economically, if we want to be more productive as a nation, we have to get some of the other sectors going. Yeah. We have to get our agriculture going. We have to get our creative industries maxing. We have to get our, our um, manufacturing, et cetera, going. And, and new industries or renewable industry, we have to get that taken off. So it's going to call for new skills. It, of course, some jobs will go and new jobs will come, mm -hmm. come on stream. So there is a lot to do and we have to explore this. There's an undergirding all of that is technology okay. if you want to become better at what we do but the academic because the higher you go in technical education you also rely on the academic skills the cognitive skills they talk about the stem education yeah. science technology mathematics mm -hmm. so we want that decent marriage between the technical and the academic skills and so from where you sit how important is competency-based education competency-based education marries the two if you're, they're mostly work-based qualifications. So therefore, you're closer to the job market where you're doing your training. You have to do your technical skills, but usually you're either doing it in a practical approach. For example, you can do management, purely academic management. You read books, but it's different from coming in a workplace and managing. So competency-based is a methodology. It's not, TVET has embraced come see base. Mm -hmm. But you can do it in any type of education, academic education, mm -hmm. where there's a high practical approach and a lot of it in the workplace, like things like the apprenticeship program, the BVTV has an apprenticeship program that, you know, is not big and few people know about it, mm -hmm. where you spend two days in the classroom and you spend the other three days in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So you would be close to the technology, you're, you're close to the action, you see the methodology, what is expected. So that is what we are trying to do. We are trying to close in the gap and that is what you call a demand-driven education and training system. Mm -hmm. So that is what Commerce Base is all about. Okay. So what do we need to do to compete on a world level as a nation? Well, I said uh, as a nation, we need to raise our technical skills. We have to be able to be in, in, in when we went to Abu Dhabi, we realized that we have to raise the level of our training in this country. Mm -hmm. And to do that, we have to expose our people to new equipment. So we need that marriage between the private sector 
and the training institutions mm -hmm. and because the private sector might the private sector is usually ahead with equipment so we, we, we want the private sector to come on board the private sector will help us to define our curriculum as well mm -hmm. and give exposure mm -hmm. to the students on up-to-date equipment up-to-date methodologies etc so that marriage I know that it, it, it calls for a culture shift mm -hmm. it calls for a culture shift both in the public sector as well as the private sector mm -hmm. so that a lot of your programs the private sector will be dictating but this is the type of programs that we want and the private sector will be making their equipment available and help in the assessing and certification of students. Okay, so finally, this is my question to you. We're saying what we need to do to compete globally. Yeah. How well are we doing? Well, we, 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 we still have some ways to go globally because when we went to World Skills, in the areas there's something called a medallion of excellence. Mm -hmm. That is when you're operating at 75, 80%. Mm -hmm. the medallion, they give you a medallion of excellence if you are operating at world standards. Mm -hmm. We didn't get any medallion there. The closest we came was in the automotive sector. So when we can go to world skills and get a medallion of excellence, you know that in the skill area, so you are up there. a percentage. A percentage? Yeah. If then you say the medallion of excellence is between 75 and 80, so give me a percentage of where Barbados is operating right now. Well, in, by the closest we came is automotive, and we were, we were somewhere around 60-odd okay. percent. All right. So we were pretty close in that area. But uh, it was not only in the... In the level of our training mm -hmm. but in terms of the exposure to technology mm -hmm. we have to expose our people to technology either virtually or s use simulators or in the workplace as well as attitude okay. the people at the world skills at the world level they are competitive and we seem to lack that you know, competitive nature. Uh, so we have more, com more competition. Unfortunately, that's where we're going to have to leave here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Okay. So that is Henderson Eastman, the Executive Director of the Technical and Vocational Education and Training Council. Residents in Fitz Village now have new cricket facilities thanks to the new DLP candidate for the area, George Connolly. He interviewed following several requests to he intervened following several requests to restore this pitch on the field adjacent to the Good Shepherd Primary School. It's just the first part of his multifaceted plan for the area, which will address housing, social and sporting facilities, education, jobs and roads. This sort of activity, and this is what I call the tripartite, this is the sort of representation that I want to bring to St. James Central, where we have civic community, we have the private sector contribution, and then we have government coordination to resolve issues, to advance issues that are raised by the constituents. So people like me don't come in and say what needs to be done. We need to listen to what the constituents want, and then we need to get them hand in hand with us to be able to fix the problems that they've raised. And that's what we're doing here. This is the first step. Mr. Connolly will also be launching a website over the weekend to allow residents to keep abreast of the developments in the area. Education, sport, all the major issues have been raised and we've categorized them individually into those items. And once the website is up after the weekend, then anyone can go on and see the individual items that are listed under those categories. And then you can decide to pledge support or whatever. The website is going to be this is our home, dlp.com. Okay, we'll take a short break here and come back with more news. Independent Senator John Watson wants to see a better effort made to retain the foreign exchange earned by the tourism industry. He made the call during debate on the Land Tax Amendment Bill 2017. That bill seeks to replace in the legislation references to the former Barbados Tourism Authority with the Barbados Tourism Product Authority. Noting the island's current challenges with less than ideal level of foreign reserves, Senator Watson says something needs to be done. I believe it's something that we need to take seriously. It is not comforting for Barbadians at this time to see that we are having less than... Um, eight weeks of foreign exchange reserves. I'm told it might be five weeks, I don't know. 
But the fact of the matter is, Madam President, that the tourist industry and the hotel sector in particular should be so encouraged not only to make sure that we get maximum return of foreign exchange earned, but also that it causes us to, to save foreign exchange. Senator Alwyn Adams says the impact of tourism on Barbados' economic development is tremendous. He believes Barbados' tourism product goes beyond just being a sun, sea and sand destination. We have been able to keep in the business because we have more than the sea and the sky and, 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 and the sand. We have been able to um, develop a product that is perhaps in a way second to none, certainly in that particular country where I live. Um, they cannot rival us in, the, in relation to our historic buildings. They, they cannot rival us in, in relation to our, our um, landscape and so on. And I want to make, I'm making that point because in recent years, uh, uh, Barbados has been designated um, a historic designation by the United Nations. And we have so much just only in Bridgetown. And when we go to Bridgetown, we come to Hold Town and Spikes Town. Since its formation in the 1960s, the National Insurance Scheme has afforded Barbadians a quality of life envied by many countries across the globe. This is the view of independent Senator Sir Roy Trotman as the Upper House debated the National Insurance and Social Security Validation and Benefits and Contributions Bill. Sir Roy says even though created by the Democratic Labour Party, the scheme has been well supported by both main political parties. He warned against any change from this. And I also challenge all the new players with the old players in the marketplace to make it clear to our public at this time and in this season that the social engineering that has taken place must not be made to be the toy or the football of any new economic thinkers, whatever their vision for the economic well-being of this country may be. It's important to say that because sometimes there are new winds that will blow, and a new wind does not necessarily blow to the well-being of anyone. It's often said that the youth are not concerned with politics or the affairs of the country. But nine primary school students debunked this view as they spoke on the topic, looking towards a better Barbados, at the St. John Toastmasters annual speech contest. More from Sharika Griffith. Stiffer penalties for crop thieves and fines for litter bugs are among the top ideas being pushed by these nine primary school students. Let us endeavor to keep Barbados tidy or not. Barbados will smell horrible and tourists will not want to visit, which means no foreign exchange. I think we should get harsher penalties for a person's caught littering. Some also believe the agricultural and manufacturing sectors are full of potential. Sharina Arthur of St. John Primary offered suggestions to the Agriculture Minister to help boost that sector. Mr. Minister, 64% of the land in our country is supposed to be arable land, but bit by bit, it is being taken up to build homes and other commercial structures, striking like osteoporosis, the backbone of our economy. There's also the view that a greater focus is needed on renewable energy. Instead of the government wasting precious dollars on redeveloping old hotels, changing the names of our schools and building and maintaining vacant host lots, I suggest that they should invest in renewable energy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the ways forward for Barbados. In the end, however, it was 11-year-old Imani Firebrace from St. Joseph Primary who took the top spot with a speech entitled Sugar Rush. It examined the link between sugary foods and diabetes. Let's make a difference for all generations to come. 
After delivering their speeches, they were also given some nuggets of advice from featured speaker DJ Salt. He wants them to be eager to learn and use social media wisely. When you don't know, go find out. When you don't know something, I become excited. Excited that there's something else out there to go and find out about. Learn about trivia. Don't just go on Snapchat and, and put on a filter of a dog or a koala. If you put on a filter of a dog or a koala, how does that help you? How about we go and find out what a koala is? Anybody knows what a koala is? This is the first year schools outside of the parish of St. John participated in the contest. Organizers are hoping to expand the contest next year to include preliminary rounds. Shiriki Griffith, CBC News. The public is being advised that the Talmaberry Nursery School at St. David's Christ Church will be closed tomorrow. The closure is to facilitate the removal of cowich from a nearby field. School will resume on Monday, January 29th. The Ministry of Education, Science, Technology and Innovation apologizes for any inconvenience caused. A retired Coast Guard officer who went above and beyond the call of duty. This is how the late former Petty Officer Elvis Henry was remembered during his funeral service at the St. George Parish Church yesterday. Scores of family, friends, former colleagues and members of the Barbados Defence Force, past and present, turned out to pay their last respects to Mr. Henry, who gave 25 years of dedicated service to the Coast Guard. In his sermon, Reverend John Rogers says, Mr. Henry touched the lives of countless people, which is the purpose of our time on earth. He says nations are built because of dedicated workers like Mr. Henry. If all we care about is a pay packet at the end of the week or the end of the month, we will achieve our pay packet and it will mean very little to us, for we will not have built our nation. Elvis' service, the time he gave, those hours he spent making sure that the people under his care were taken care of, will go even long beyond his time in this world. For those whose lives would have been touched by him, would have received an example just as Jesus' disciples received of what a good shepherd does. After the break, we'll check in with our regional neighbors. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has taken issue with those, he says, appear to be waiting for the government to fail at fighting crime and who mock his promise that Jamaicans would be able to sleep with their doors open under a Jamaica Labour Party government. He says everyone should be rallying around his call instead of being negative. I hear people, you know, almost wishing the state of emergency to fail. It's the, you know, it's, 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 it's probably the last tool that you have in your toolbox. You really want it to work. You know, you wonder in which Jamaica do they live? If they have another Jamaica stored up somewhere that they could pull out of a bag and say, here is, here is the, the, the good Jamaica. Meanwhile, Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says the declaration of the public state of emergency in St. James has not affected travel bookings to Jamaica. Bartlett says there hasn't been any fall-off in bookings to the island or widespread cancellations as the attractions and hotels are still filled with visitors. The arrivals are still happening. The issues of cancellations have not been a concern as yet. And I'm very careful in making that point because emotions are involved in this game and people's investment in their vacation is a big investment. And so they're always careful about these things. In St. Lucia, kidney patients are being promised improved delivery of service with the opening of a new dialysis unit on the Owen King Hospital. We get more in this report from HTS News. The dialysis unit at the Owen King EU Hospital will replace the services being offered at the Victoria Hospital. Health officials say it comprises high-end dialysis machines and chairs and will be manned by trained staff, including 17 recently hired nurses. The purpose-built unit provides light, spacious treatment areas for patients. But it's not just about a new home. It is about the opportunities for improved care and for more people to access services. And no one knows that better than patients who have been on dialysis for many years. I am very happy that we no longer have to 
turn away people. Because for somebody to come on dialysis, somebody like me has to die. And that is the reality. Um, so I am very happy that right now there is increased capacity and that we are having this conversation where so many of you are here. So there are many people that are touched by dialysis or by kidney failure. And I'm very happy that we can have this conversation. This machine is clearing us much better, you know, and then make you feel stronger. Nephrologist Dr. Merle Clark says the opening is a new day for both patients and medical staff. She also paid tribute to those who toiled under less than ideal circumstances in the old unit. The fact that we've been able to operate out of our old unit at Victoria Hospital for the past few years is really nothing short of miraculous. It's testimony to the dedication and the sacrifices made by not only staff, but our patients. It really is testimony to the resilience of everybody. When we speak of our staff, we speak of people like Henry, our technician. Henry who lives at VH. In fact, I'm not sure if Henry has a home at this point because morning, noon, and night he's there. Henry would sit with those machines and don't get me wrong, our machines have served us well. They've been long serving and they've served us well, but the truth is there's only so long they can go. The nurses who, because of how temperamental our machines have become, how not very reliable, generally have to be there at 3 a.m. Their normal working day starts at 7 a.m. But nurses like Tanya Odlum, Ms. Daniel, Ms. Newton, Ms. Hunt, Ms. Polio, so many others, who we absolutely have to mention for the sacrifices that they've made getting home to be at the unit at 3 a.m. And again, the patients who are there promptly waiting for them at 3 a.m. to start dialysis, so we ensure that every patient is dialyzed for that day, despite the fact that machines might have broken down and we may have had to shorten time, but that everybody was able to be dialyzed on the given day. Okay, we're going to take a look into the world of sports after the break, but before we get there, here's a tip from Cooperators General Insurance. This tip of the day is brought to you by Cooperators General Insurance Company Limited. Insurance the way you want it to be. Know the law. It is illegal to buy or sell marijuana. Even holding small amounts of the drug can lead to arrest or fines. This tip is brought to you in association with the National Council on Substance Abuse, promoting drug awareness. <laughs> 